Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth lecture of vibration with MATLAB. In this lecture, we are going to talk about harmonic analysis using the Fourier transform approach. In many cases, your vibratory motion is periodic, it is not harmonic. And how do you differentiate the periodic and harmonic signal? The harmonic signal can be represented by a sine term or cosine term. For example, here I am showing the first wave which is a harmonic signal and can be represented by simple writing a sin omega t or a cos omega t where omega is the frequency in radians per second. However, when we will see the second signal, we cannot represent this signal with a simple sine term or cos term. It is a periodic signal. Similarly, the third and the fourth signal are another type of periodic signal where the third one is particularly having the very sharp corners or we can say that it is kind of a triangular wave. So whenever we are having such periodic signal and if we want to find the frequency component in your signal, which is always a primary goal when we, we are dealing with different vibratory signal, we apply the Fourier series expansion. So when we do the Fourier series expansion, what exactly we get? So Fourier series expansion says that any periodic signal which is in the time domain can be represented by the different sine and cosine term, infinite sum of different sine and cosine term. For example, here I am having a periodic signal. If I will do the Fourier expansion of Fourier transformation of this signal, I will get different sine and cosine term. Here I am showing that this first one is a pure harmonic signal, but it is having a particular amplitude and a frequency. The blue one is again a harmonic signal. Similarly, the third one, if I will add all the three signal, I will get back the original signal. This is the basic philosophy in the Fourier series expansion. So if you will do the Fourier transform of this signal, you will get these three signals and you can analyze these three signal individually. So you will get the three frequencies in as well as the three amplitude. Then you can say that this signal is actually combination of three different waves which are having three different amplitude. Similarly, if we are having a complicated signal, for example, we are having this kind of a triangular signal and tau is the time period of this periodic signal. If I will do the Fourier transformation of this signal, I will get infinite number of sine and cosine term. Here I am showing few example that we will get this signal, then this signal. For individual signal, we will be able to get the amplitude as well as the frequency. So that it, it tells us that this, this signal is the combination of multiple sine and cosine term. And when we sum up all these terms, we will again get back to the original signal. If we will see the mathematical formula of your Fourier series, this is the formula of the Fourier series where this xt, which is actually a periodic signal, it can be represented by the combination of infinite sine term as well as the cosine term. The first term is a constant term, remaining all other terms having cosine or sine component where omega is the fundamental frequency of this signal which can be written as 2 pi by tau where tau is the uh, in the given case the tau is the time period of your periodic signal here you can see that this a1 a2 similarly b1 b2 are different coefficient and you are having omega then you are having 2 omega if you will see the third term you will have 3 omega so we can say that this is your fundamental tone and then we are having the harmonics because if you are having a frequency omega, you can say that the omega is your fundamental frequency and then if you are having 2 omega, 3 omega, n omega, these are the harmonic of your fundamental tone. If you will see the second picture here, I just want to represent that if you are having only one term of the Fourier series, this would be your approximation and that will be a straight line because it's a constant term. Similarly, if we are having two term approximation, three term approximation or multiple term approximation, you will be more closer to the actual term and if you will take all infinite term, you will get back to the original signal. Here A1, A2, A3, we can generalize it as AN and BN where N is going to indicate the harmonics. We can write the XT formula as A0 by 2, then the summation of two term a n cos n omega t and b n sin 
n omega t where this n omega is representing the harmonic or we can say that n is indicating the harmonic and this a n and b n can be calculated using these two formula as well as we can also calculate the n naught but but please understand that we are not going to solve this mathematical formula in our code we are directly going to apply a standard matlab function we call it fft command which actually give the fast fourier transform now fast fourier transform is a little bit modified uh, methodology from generated from the fourier transform we are not going in the detail of the fast fourier transform you please just for your knowledge i am saying that this is a fft which is fast fourier th transform it is a modified algorithm which give a faster result but the philosophy remains the same that how we are calculating and particularly when we are talking about fourier analysis of a vibratory signal what is our prime interest that we can understand here here i am showing two different waves the first wave is a vibratory signal and suppose it is a harmonic signal if i will do the fourier transform or i will say that i will apply the fft command to this signal what i will get i will get a vector and if simply i will plot that vector fft command will not directly generate the plot it will give me a vector and when i will do the plot command i will see this sort of plot what it is indicating it is indicating that this axis is the frequency axis and this is your amplitude axis for example amplitude of the original signal is a1 and the frequency of this signal is let's f1 so you will get a spike here which will be corresponding to value f1 and a1 so after doing the fft and plotting you will be able to see that what is the frequency component in the input signal similarly the second signal is the composition of multiple waves we have already seen it before that i have intentionally created this signal considering the three different waves for example the frequency of first is let this is the time period of first one and the f1 is 1 by tau 1 it is having amplitude 10 here similarly the frequency of remaining two signals assume that f2 and f3 if i will do the fft command for the signal given signal and i will directly plot it i will get this sort of plot where i am going to have three spikes the three spikes will be corresponding to the three amplitude this would be the amplitude of the first wave let this is f1 f2 and f3 and we are also able to see what is the contribution of individual frequency component so, so this is the beauty of the Fourier series uh, transformation and particularly in MATLAB it becomes very convenient for us simply apply the FFT command and you will get the frequency composition of your signal this analysis is very important particularly when we are dealing with the real life signal and here I am showing one example this is a signal I have measured from a vibratory signal this is the actual signal and here I am showing that I have measured signal up to 8 second. Y axis is showing the voltage value because my transducer was creating some voltage and directly I have written the voltage. But if I want to convert it, it would be your acceleration, displacement or velocity. But this is not the important thing here. We must understand that this is a signal and if I will apply the FFT command, I am getting this sort of response here and I am plotting it. So here I am able to see that the fundamental frequency of the signal is 15 Hertz and then we are having multiple harmonics which is indicating the signal is having periodicity. See it further here I have plotted it only up to 50 Hertz but I have a choice to plot for the larger frequency range and then again I will find more spikes but most of the signal can be visualized by taking few harmonics of your or few term of your Fourier series. There is more to understand you by for the Fourier series but as our prime objective is to just understand the philosophy of the Fourier transformation and then we are moving towards the MATLAB implementation. So I am just stopping the theoretical part of your Fourier transform here and let's move to the MATLAB command. So this is my first code where I am doing Fourier transformation for a signal which is having only one frequency come. I have created the signal but when you are having a real life problem you will directly have the vibration vibratory signal but here I have created it and then I have analyzed it using the Fourier transformation.
so line 2 and 3 are standard line which are there for clearing the command window as well as the memory then i have given a frequency as 10 hertz and amplitude 5 hertz so i am creating a signal of amplitude 5 and frequency 5 hertz so i have to write 2 pi and 10 t it is 10 hertz sorry so this 2 pi 10 is actually representing the omega value after that i have calculated the dt value so please understand here how i am calculating the dt value so dt i have calculated by simply 1 by frequency of my signal and 1 by 20 so the 1 by frequency is actually giving you the time period and then i am dividing the time period and i am assuming that this is my time step there are standard way to consider a time step but generally what we do if we want to visualize a signal properly we simply take the 120th value of the time period of your signal in the present case there is only one frequency component if you are having multiple frequency component you have to consider the maximum frequency or the minimum time period and then you have to divide it by the 20 but there is no standard rule you can also check it by using the 10 value or 5 value but when you will do it by yourself you will find that in case of 1 by 20th value your signal is more close to a sine curve otherwise you will find the sharp corners then in line 8 i have created a time vector which is starting from the 0 increasing with increment dt and i am making it up to 2000 steps so total length of this time vector will become 2001 because it is starting from the zero and then we are having more 2000 terms line 9 is representing this vector because i have created the vector by just saying amplitude and sign 2 pi and frequency and the time so this is my vector which is nothing but a sine wave starting from the zero amplitude is five and the frequency of this sine wave is just 10 hertz if you are having a real life problem you will have a vibration signal so you no need to create this vector your actual code start from line 11 because if you will deal with a real life problem no need to write from line 5 to 9 you will simply have vector v measured from the vibratory system then you have to create one another variable that is the fs and fs is what fs is your sampling rate sampling rate means sample taken per second for example you have measured the signal for 5 seconds and your total data points are let's 10000 so what is your sampling rate the sampling rate is sample taken per second in the given case the sampling rate become will what 10000 by 5 so i can say that the sampling rate for the given measurement is the 2000 so when you have the real life problem you will directly know the sampling rate because every measuring tool or measuring computer along with the data acquisition card will give you a sampling rate but in the given case we have created this signal so i have to just take inverse of the time step that will give me the sample per second taken in line 12 i am measuring the length of my entire vector for example if you have taken the data for 5 seconds using a sampling rate of 2000 the total data point you have taken is 10000 in matlab we are having this command known as length if you will apply the length command on v vector you will get the total number of data point in the v vector for the present case as i have considered 2000 point plus 1.0 so the length command is going to give me that l1 will be 2001 here now 13 line is the core of this code here i am applying standard matlab function that is fft to get the fourier transform of this vector but there is some standard statement we have to write in the matlab which is here that if i will apply fft command i am writing vector v and i am also giving the length of vector v then i am multiplying this with the value 2 by l1 so no need to bother this is standard matlab statement if you will change this statement your answer will will not be correct particularly if you are not multiplying with the 2 by l1 you will not be able to get the right amplitude but the frequency will be there in your signal in addition to that when you apply the fft command the output vector is a complex vector you will get a1 plus b1 i a2 plus i b2 
and if you want to get the actual amplitude of your signal for example here my amplitude is 5 I have to take the absolute value of this because this is a complex vector so you can either see the real part or the imaginary part or we can see the absolute part but our interest always lie in the absolute part so what we do we take the a1 square plus b1 square similarly we will take the this absolute value for all the data point so when we will run the 14th line we will get a vector name absolute v which is having 2001 data point at this point let's take a pause please listen very carefully when we do this Fourier transform the basic philosophy lies with some principles like Nyquist criteria where we say that your frequency uh, sampling rate should be double of minimum sampling rate should be double of your frequency exist in your system that is more theoretical part which you can learn but here I am primarily focusing to apply the FFT command and to interpret the results so I am not going in too much detail but at this point you should understand when you will do this FFT command the output vector will create in such a way that you will see a mirror image kind of thing for example your signal is having let's F1 value and your sampling rate is 2000 and your frequency in your signal is suppose 50 Hertz so when you will try to see this absolute V command you will find two spike one spike will be corresponding to 50 value and another will be 1950 value so what will happen here you will get a mirror image of this and your actual signal is only up to this half length so what we do we only plot the half value of this which will give me the actual value if you will plot the entire vector it will be mirror image and you will get confused the first thing you should remember here out of this 2001 point we are only interested in 1000 points this is one example only you may have 2 lakh point or 10 lakh points so there also you will be only interested up to the half length of this vector and if you have understood this I am moving to the next line in line 16 I am creating another vector and naming it as the frequency vector now what is this if you will see the previous line carefully you have only supplied vector v to the fft command you have not given any information about the time vector so when you want to plot the frequency vector you will get the spikes in your plot but you will not be able to see the actual corresponding frequency value that you will get only when you will create a correct frequency vector or horizontal vector because this absolute V and this frequency is going to create a vector where horizontal axis will be corresponding to the different frequency composition of your signal where the vertical axis is going to give you the amplitude. So I have to create this frequency vector and this is again a very standard term in MATLAB. So if you don't want to understand the philosophy in too much detail you can simply follow these lines and you will get the FFT of your signal. So this is what I am starting this vector from zero value then there is an increment it is just like I have created a time vector previously where I have started with the zero and a time step here instead of time step I am having a frequency step defined by df and how I am creating this it is equal to the one by last value of your time vector so I am simply writing time and the end. Here if I will take the same example that I have measured the value up to 5 seconds, total data points are 10,000 points, sampling rate is 2000. So in my time vector the last value corresponding to the time is 5 seconds. So here I am interested to write the 5 so I can simply say that it is 1 by 5 or 0 0.2. So for the present example the time uh, increment in the frequency axis will be 1 by 5. So therefore it is become always important to take the data for a longer time period because when you will do the Fourier transform and you will visualize the frequency the gap between the two point in, on the frequency axis directly related to the total number of samples or the total time you have measured. If I would have taken it only for one second in my frequency axis I will not be able to visualize any point between 1 and 2 because my df will be 1 so there I will find 1 2 3 4 5 6 I, if I am interested to see the value at 0 0.5 or 1.5 I cannot see 
if i would have taken the sample for up to 2 second the difference between the any two point on the horizontal axis will be 0.5 then i am having the term which is fs by 2 here what i am doing i am creating the frequency vector for half length because as i said that there will be mirror image i am only interested up to the half value of that my sampling rate is let's 2000 but when i will see the plot there will be mirror image so i am only interested to see the uh, frequency up to 1000 there is direct relation of this with the nyquist criteria which says that the sampling rate should be minimum double of the frequency composition of your signal otherwise you will not be able to see the frequency uh, if you are interested of this part you can read any textbook or on the internet but here i am not going in too much of detail here i am just focusing the application part of your fft command so remaining four lines line from line 18 to 22 simply the plot command in line 18 i am plotting my actual vector which is my vector corresponding to the time domain line 19 indicating a different command where i am limiting my y-axis if i will keep y limit as minus 10 to plus 10 when i will see the plot the y-axis will be from minus 10 to 10 plus 10 value we will see it when we will go to the matlab environment and line 21 indicating the plot where we are plotting the frequency vector corresponding to your fft vector and you can see here the length of this vector is 2001 i am only interested to the half value so i have taken it from one to the length of the frequency value the, why i am writing so because sometime you will not consider the last term so that there will be a problem of length of the vector so what we are doing directly here we are plotting this vector to a length exactly equal to the this vector there may be possibility that this part make you a little confused but when we will go to the matlab environment it will be more clear to you this is our matlab code so let's make the frequency 10 and the amplitude of signal let's make 5 we are doing it up to the 2000 value and let's run the code and see the output so here is your output you can see here that this is your actual signal which is having amplitude ranging from plus uh, plus 5 to minus 5 and you can see here that your amplitude is 5 if you want to cross check the frequency you can zoom in and you can check the gap between the two peaks which will give you the time value and then you can inverse that and you will get the frequency let's try it that this is the first peak if you will measure the second peak and then so you can see here that the value 1.925 2.025 if you take the difference of the 2x point and inverse it you will get a value 10 which is indicating the frequency of this signal is 10. This is the Fourier transform plot where I have taken the value from 0 to 100. You can go beyond that but I have limit myself by 0 to 100 and how, can, how you can see here that this is my command for uh, the time vector and this is my command for the frequency vector plotting and you can see here that i have taken my y limit from 0 to 30 similarly you can limit yourself in the x limit matlab by default have given a value up to the 100 hertz and if you see this spike it is corresponding to the 10 hertz value you can see here it is corresponding to the 10 hertz and its amplitude is 5 that means when you are doing the Fourier transform and you are making a plot, you are getting the frequency composition of your signal. We can cross check it again by changing the frequency. Let's make the frequency 14 and the amplitude let's make 20. Now you can change your limit. You can make it minus 30 to minus uh, 40 and here also you can make it up to let's 40 and try it again. This is the output and here you can see that this is your time domain plot where you are having a signal ranging from minus 20 to plus 20 and here also you can measure the frequency of your signal and you will find the time period and the frequency but directly you can find it if using your frequency plot so here also you can see that this is the you are having a frequency which is corresponding to the 14 hertz and amplitude is close to the 20 value so this is 14 hertz value similarly you can play with the code and you can take different value for your frequencies now the second important thing here if you are having multiple frequency what will happen 
so quickly see a code for the multiple frequency this is second code here thus everything is same except that i have considered three frequencies 10 hertz 8 hertz and 4 hertz amplitude of individual components is 5 10 and 3 to calculate the time step what i am doing i am measuring the maximum value out of these three frequencies and then i am making my time step then the time vector this is my vector i have created by summing up the three frequencies as i said if you are having a real life problem no need to create this vector you will simply have your signal and then you simply write with the line 13 so this is my uh, actual code and if we will see it in the matlab environment this is our code we are we are having three frequency 10 8 and 4 if i will run this code this is the output and you can see here that your signal is not a harmonic signal it is the combination of multiple frequencies so we are calling it as a periodic signal and this is the frequency response or the frequency spectrum i would say and if you will see here there are three frequency component if you will check this is corresponding to 8 hertz this is corresponding to 10 hertz and this is corresponding to 4 hertz similarly you can make different signals and you can get the frequency of the given signal with respect to the corresponding amplitude so i hope that with this explanation now you will be able to make your own code for the fourier transform and to visualize the signal or to diagnose the signal in terms of frequency composition and the amplitude so with this note i am closing this session thank you